to um, Lynn and Anne Marie's vlog of the day. It is now currently 4.59, Saturday, May 11th. And we're having a party. We made smoothies. Cheers. Protein powder. And we're talking about a lovely writer today from the Jacobean period. and Amelia Lanier. Yes, Amelia Lanier. She was a BA of her time and also a feminist of her time. Shakespeare well. notified her as the dark lady because of her writing style. And she was also the very first woman to be established as a poet and author. That's right. And uh, apparently she was pretty scandalous as well. So she came from Italy uh, with her family. Land of the courtesans. Yes. And they were all musicians for the court of Henry VIII. Right? Yes. And then she had an affair with Elizabeth, um, Lord Chamberlain, Henry Carey, and he got her pregnant. So that kind of led to the downfall of her career. And uh, she actually had to get married because, you know, can't get married. Or had to leave court. Can't have baby without being married. So a literal whore. Yes, she was a whore of her time. And or courtesan. Courtesan, yes. And But she did get married uh, to a lovely guy. His name is Alfonso Lanier. And, and her efforts, efforts to establish herself as a writer during her own time was not appreciated and her fortunes dramatically decreased. Yes, and um, so her time at court basically essentially came to nothing except for getting knocked out. Yes, and however, she did marry a musician. Uh, so that was like the only dignifiable thing throughout her career. Yes, um, unfortunately, their marriage did not work out very well, and uh, in the end, she uh, was very poor. And due to that fact, is because she had to start writing her poetry, and she turned to her intellect. Um, in order to do so. So today we are going to share with you some cool characteristics. Um, we're going to talk about one of her famous poems, um, Eve's, Eve's Apology in Defense of Women. Yes. And um, we're going to kind of give you an overview of what it's about. And basically it focuses on the satire and sarcasm, however you want to view it, of women's defense in, in, in the form of biblical times because men were so masculine and here comes Eve and so forth with like, you know, her dainty little self, yet she gets blamed by God for all massive sin, so. So basically, um, I'm playing Adam today and, um. Today I'm Eve, but, um, my <laughs> name tag fell off my bosom area. Wow. Way to go. Why do you have breasts? <laughs> So, um, because I selected a forbidden fruit from God's tree of evil or good, so you know, forbidden. Fruit. I'm a terrible person now. Yeah. Well, we all can't be perfect, like me, Adam. Of you know, stands for all men. Or the promiscuous Amelia Lanier, for instance. Well, again, I'm talking about Amelia. So let's get back to it. All right, so Eve's apology in defense of women. Um, so one of the first characteristics of the literary period, which is the Jacobean period, is the literature focuses on the mind instead of the heart, which is clearly seen because Eve picks the apple, which gives her all knowledge, and that is ultimately why God sends her to mankind, because she has become mortal and with becoming mortal, her and Adam gain the intellects and aspects of human life. And so we, we're going to read you some quotes uh, from the, the poem itself. Um, and the first quote, I'm going to read about Adam. Um, and we're going to just kind of show you how Amelia, or yeah, well, th this is her stance on basically humanity. So yeah, so how Amelia feels about... Adam, or as you could say, men. So on line 41 in her poem, it says, Who being framed by God's eternal hand, the perfectest, the perfectest man that ever breathed on earth, and from God's mouth received that straight command, the breach whereof he knew he was he knew was present death. So basically, Amelia was saying in these four beautiful lines that 
even though men... Yourself, got, Adam. Right, me. I was made perfect. However, I did a deed that was also, unfortunately... The greatest sin of all time. The greatest sin of all time. And according, according to Amelia, um, I, I had present death because of it. And God punished you with hard labor in biblical times, so... Hmm. It was hard. It was a hard not life. Well, all right. So do you want to take it over, uh, talk about Eve? Yes. So Eve's character can be described as our mother Eve, who tasted of the tree, giving to Adam what she held most dear, was simply good and had no power to see. The their after coming harm did not appear. The subtle serpent that our sex betrayed before our fall, so sure a plot had laid. And those are lines 19 to... 24. So, ba basically, Amelia Lanier is going through the subtle sarcasm that Eve is like this awful person who betrays God and betrays Adam and just goes for it, you know, because she's the mother of all women. So, why not blame her? Why not to go to the very beginning? Right. And so, again, I want to reiterate that this poem is a feminist poem. Um, it's Christian feminist, which is... Especially coming from one of the first established women writers. Right. And to to come out and say something so... Blatant. Yeah, so blatant. It just... Especially going from the biblical times at that, which was kind of like the men's work, especially from medieval times. Right. Because having, during this time, right, the ancient writers were considered... Um, Reference. That's, that's well. Her writers. Today. She was influenced by um, Petrarchy, so mm -hmm. there is that. So she was influenced, which is actually the sixth characteristic. Ancient writers became their inspiration. Latin ancient writers. So there you have it, folks. Um, and, we can just and as well as her actually using the Bible as a sense of how she wants to go about her feministic viewpoints. viewpoint. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And so we have some more characters that we want to share with you. Um, the first one is Pilati. Um, and he is actually a real person. And he... He crucified Jesus. Jesus, yes. And in lines 1 through 5, we can describe him as, Now Pontius Pilati is to judge the cause of faultless Jesus, who before him stands, who neither hath offended prince nor laws. Although he now he brought into woeful hand, bands, O noble governor, make thou yet a pause. And this is basically going into the conversation of um, feministic viewpoints as well, because Pilates' wife v told him, begged him not to kill Jesus, yet... Yet he did, and so now he has to carry this sin as well, um, which is a pretty big sin to... To kill. That's a pretty big deal. Yeah, to, to kill Jesus. Yes, definitely. And you can also see that the sarcasm coming again because um, she refers to Pilates' wife constantly in the third person. Pilates' wife just as Grendel, Grendel's mother. There you go, from Beowulf, mm -hmm. medieval epic. So you can definitely see her bringing in that incorporation of undermining women, yet having Eve represent the strong sarcasm. That women bring with the intellect from the forbidden fruit. Well, thanks for hanging out with us today. Um, if you want to get our smoothie recipe, just hit the the follow the follow link down at the bottom, and, and don't forget you. to subscribe and like this as well. Um, and we will see you next Saturday at uh, four forty four p.m. Bye. Bye. <laughs>